started Make Life Fun podcast because I needed more fun in my life. When I became a mother, I, for some reason, just put on this like high ponytail, mom jeans, and nose to the ground. I wasn't having fun. It wasn't until I started having fun that it started becoming easy. Fun and mental health go hand in hand for me. I've been in this mental health game my whole life. <laughs> and I am so lit up to like help other people. I'm so lit up for other people to experience this because it's what my wish and my mission is for every woman is to find safety within themselves because it took me a long time to get here. Hello friends, welcome back to the Make Life Fun podcast. I am so excited that you're here. Today I have with me Jenna Jake on the podcast. She is the host of Soul Streaker podcast and she's here to talk to us today about living a delicious life and I am just so happy to have you here Jenna. So thank you for agreeing to come and be a guest on the Make Life Fun podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I love this idea of playing and deliciousness. So this is definitely the place for me to be. Yay. (laughs) So please tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. I am a licensed therapist in New Jersey and I'm also a coach and I work mostly coaching uh, executives. A lot of like working with the women, helping them be the best versions of themselves. And I am also the host of the Soul Speaker podcast. And uh, my tagline is, you know, you feel all lit up and excited, just like you ran through a field naked, you know, because when you just run through a field naked, you're not bored, you're not checked out, you're lit up, you're excited, you know, no one's ever bored running through a field naked. So I just want people to feel that way. I want their soul to be vibrant. So it's like Soul Streaker. (laughs) Yes. When I first heard that, that was your tagline. It spoke to me. I have never ran through a field naked, but that visualization does. It just feels like you're just free, just completely free as yourself. Right. Yes. And that is a big topic for make life fun is that self-acceptance piece. And in order to feel that freedom, you have to have that little, a lot of it (laughs) of that self-acceptance. So I would love for you to speak on that a little bit and how that relates to living a delicious life. Yeah. It's almost like a catch 22, like to have, to do your soul's journey or to be playful, you have to have Mm self-esteem. And in order to have self-esteem, it's really good to accept and love yourself and be playful. So Mm -hmm. it's almost, you think, where do I begin? Mm -hmm. And that's why I think people just begin in joy because that's the easiest place to start. Yes. Just when you're enjoying, you're in joy. Find whatever is delicious for you, whether it's the most delicious cup of coffee or running through a field naked, whatever it is, just be in the moment, be mindful and let it, the beauty reveal itself to you. Yes, that is a beautiful answer. It is so true. Laughter is the best medicine. Play is the secret sauce. Those two things for me, since I was a kid, I think my parents have like instilled that in us. And I never really knew it as a healing modality. I never knew that it had so much power, that play, that joy. But in my life, it's shown me that it really does have that much power. Right. It's like that book, everything that we needed to know we learned in kindergarten. <laughs> Is it that true? It's play. People don't play enough. Creativity. It's all underrated. And mm-hmm. people need like to have children to, to have give themselves permission to do those things. And that's it's better to just just play, just do it. Don't take anything too seriously. Don't take life too seriously or yourselves. Right. And something that you just said spoke to me is that when you have kids, you think you're going to play. But the moment I had my son, he's 10 months old now, I became that serious version of myself. I instantly put on the mom ponytail, mom jeans, and was like, okay, life is serious now. And that's where this whole thought process of make life fun came up for me was I had to find my joy again, almost. Yeah. Well, congratulations on your beautiful son. Thank you. Yes. And people, yeah, you go, you develop a mommy mode Mm -hmm. and mommy, you know, and your heart is kind of on the outside of your body (laughs) and it's really difficult to just play and, and there's always going to be something else to do. And your kid is going to ask you to play. And that's really the most important thing you can do because everything else can wait. Yeah. You know, the laundry isn't going to be in therapy on the couch in 20 years. <laughs> oh my gosh. I know that's not funny, but it is. It sounds almost too simple, almost too easy. Right. Right. Yeah. That's what the moms that are listening to this right now, they're like, is it really that easy? Like the laundry, the dishes, because that is the things that we think are the important things. We have to get this done. We have to do the to-do lists. 
but like you're speaking to that enjoyment, that deliciousness, that joy, letting that be the guide. Yeah. The, the laundry never stops. It's, it'll be back next week. <laughs> not going to miss it. That is so true. You're not going to miss it. So how did you get into living your delicious life? That's a really good question. You know, I've had my, definitely my share of tough times and challenges, and I have a special needs daughter. Raising her was, has been difficult. And I found myself checked out and realizing that, you know, a bad day can easily turn, a bad moment can turn into a bad day, which can easily become, you have enough of those, a bad life. It's like, what are you telling yourself? How, you know, this stinks and, oh, I can't do this anymore. And, you know, so you need some kind of buffer or something. And I actually have a buffer program that I created, but, and and so, you know, it's all about just having something, some kind of modality, some positive structure to get yourself out of it and, you know, control your mind because the mind is a wonderful servant and a lousy master. Mm. So I really wanted to say, okay, do I want my experience to be checked out or do I want my experience to be delicious? And it's not an easy thing. It's a practice. Mm -hmm. You have to practice it every day, like yoga or anything else you want to get good at. You hit the nail on the head there. 100%. It's that you're practicing something. That's what I always say. You're practicing something. So it might as well be something that's going to serve you and bring that joy into your life. You were saying you had a program about checked out. Do you want to speak on that a little bit? Yeah. I mean, I have a buffer, a buffer. website, yeah. but I, yeah, I have my website, jennajake.com. And then I have a buffers website called buffers and breakthroughs for special needs parents. I am actually going, working on creating a course for parents with special needs with this buffer program. So that'll be coming up, but it's just really an acronym about, you know, B is for like break, you know, B just be like, take a break. People don't give themselves permission to take a break. U is for unearth new territory. Try something new. Don't keep doing the same thing, expecting a different result. And then just, you know, fall F is like fall in love with everything and fee, you know, free all the F words like forgiveness <laughs> and faith and freedom, you know, friends and family, that kind of thing. Flooding, you know, I flood myself a lot, you know, just constant positivity, positivity. Mm-hmm. It's a practice. It's a conscious effort. Ease evolve and people are so, what did I get done today? They think about mm-hmm. being productive versus evolving. How are you becoming a better person? How are you making other people feel? You know, R is like, remember them. It's like, not only about you, but remember your child other people what they're going through the world at large I mean and then S is of course sense of humor or service (laughs) things like that oh I love that so much it's so true that we don't give ourselves breaks that we don't flood ourselves with that positivity we are looking outside of us and seeing the world like right now things are happening and it's not pretty it's sometimes really hard to not Just keep your focus on that one thing. But what you're saying is we have to be so intentional. Yeah, exactly. We have to really be intentional about our thoughts and what we're experiencing and how we're coming off to other people, being kind to ourselves. Yeah, that one's a big one. Being kind. It's like we're our own worst critic. Yes. We'll pick ourselves apart and we'll say things to ourselves that we would never say to anybody else true it's true why do we do this yeah it's just i guess easier when it's just in your mind and it's just going and just going <laughs> because then you have to be the one to stop it and that takes the work right so it's you easier want- almost to let it run rampant yeah i will admit i'm the you know the first one it's like i you know i do a lot of this because i want to heal myself to not let your mind run you that to you for you to run your mind mm-hmm. and that one Oh my gosh, that one. Yeah. That one is not an easy one. No, no. To start to get control of that, that negative self-talk. No. So so how is it being a special needs mom? Like speak to that because I do not know what that experience is like. And I would love to hear. It's a great thing. And it's a hard thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a lot of work and a lot of heartache, but you know, she's one of my greatest teachers, my daughter. And there's something sacred about that because her, her soul is not touched by autism. Her soul really is perfect. And you got to focus on that and not the physical stuff, which is really how to see, we should really, you know, we could really see each other. Mm -hmm. So she's a great teacher of that in that respect. And, you know, very sacred, always present, doesn't hold a grudge, you know, the best secret keeper, doesn't judge people, you know, doesn't get embarrassed. It's very spiritual when you look at it from that. Wow. That just gave me goosebumps from like my head to my toes, because the way you described it, I have never heard of it described that way before. 
that is very sacred, that her soul is not touched by autism, that she is present and not holding any grudges. And that's how all of us should aspire to be. Right. We could learn a lot from special needs people, but we, we limit them in our society. We, we think we're better than they are and they have so much to teach us. Absolutely. Even in just that way, you just phrased that was like a teaching moment for me that I felt in my body. So I just think you're so right. There's so much for us to learn. And so I would love to hear anything else you're in the mood to share about your mom journey, your delicious journey, <laughs> your podcast journey, yeah, well, have, <laughs> whatever is on your heart today. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, I have two daughters, actually. I have a younger daughter who's typical. And, you know, there's, there's she's a whole other sense of deliciousness. And, you know, it's like, how do you, you know, when you do, and I have my mom, my mom is unfortunately has dementia. So I have my challenges. You know, it's how do you stay positive, I guess, when you mm-hmm. have challenges and things are happening to you? I guess that's a good Good, you know, question. It's really just about flooding yourself, like I said, flooding yourself and making that choice of wanting to feel deliciousness, feel happiness, feel playfulness rather than experiencing sadness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know with me growing up, fake it till you make it was my motto that got me through some hard, dark days that served me really, really well until about three years ago when there was no more faking it you had to like heal (laughs) it was like bodies here telling you it's time to heal and so I do believe that that positivity even if we have to fake it for a while yeah it will serve us because we're programming ourselves and we're teaching ourselves whether we're faking it or we're really truly in that feeling of being positive with ourselves right I agree with you and I think even if you're faking it, you're, you're bringing those positive vibes, mm-hmm. you know, just even a little bit of positivity, you know, uh, like Esther H- and if people don't listen to Abraham Hicks or Esther, I love Esther mm-hmm. Hicks, Abraham Hicks. And, you know, she always says, well, you can, the situation's happening and you can choose to be sad in the situation, or you can choose to be happy in the situation. Mm-hmm. Yep. They so say that- the biggest thing is our circumstances there. The world is still going to be chaotic. There's still going to be craziness going on. And it's right. what finding that stillness for ourselves within ourselves. And that's why I love gratitude. Gratitude. I always say gratitude and forgiveness are the superfoods of spirituality. Mm. And when you can, if you, there's nothing else you can do, if you can just get into gratitude, even if you're, if so many things aren't happening that are traumatic for you. Mm-hmm. Just say, you know, I'm grateful for this cup of coffee. I'm grateful for the breath that I'm breathing. I'm grateful I can see. I know I'm grateful that my country is not being invaded right now. Whatever it is, Absolutely. you know, that act is one step in, in the direction mm-hmm. of feeling peace. Absolutely. That nobody, gratitude practice. It's big. Nobody wants anything unless they're going to, you know, feel better in the having of it. So mm-hmm. how can you make, get yourself to feel better? Because it's, it's really your job. You're responsible for the way you feel. Mm-hmm. And people think more about their, their underwear choice than their emotions. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So- and I'm, gu- I'm guilty of it too. I, I'm neurotic and I tend to, you know, roast about things and I go, okay, I'm telling myself I'm, I'm banging a bad movie maker putting out a podcast called don't have conviction for your fiction don't be a bad movie maker Mm -hmm. tell a different story Mm -hmm. and that power like you're saying is within us the person who's listening to this right now is within you yeah we are all pieces of god that's what they say right yeah piece of the master i am a firm believer of it 100 Mm percent and yeah 100 percent that masterpiece from right (laughs) <laughs> all the times that I am thinking about this topic of the positivity and writing your own story, what comes to my mind is the people like the person right now who is listening to this, the mom right now that is listening to this, that is having like the hardest day, right? And she's in bed, doesn't want to get out of bed. She's just feeling not happy with herself. What is that one little tool that you would give her to get her moving? I know there, we can start looking at gratitude, but when you're feeling like you don't even want to get out of bed, do you think gratitude is enough to get you out of bed? That, and I do a Japa meditation, which I really love. You know, I chant, ah, and if you can do it out of your third eye for like for 20 minutes, you'll, you'll feel pretty good. Mm. But just that, and just say, okay, you know, if you're going to get from one minute to the next, and it's really a time to communicate with yourself. Mm. What, why can't I get out of bed? Mm -hmm. Am I afraid? Am I overwhelmed? What can I break it down to? what can I look forward to today? Mm-hmm. And I create something, even if it's just like, I'm going to lay on my couch and watch a movie in an mm-hmm. hour. 
Yeah. Give yourself something to look forward to is that joyful anticipation, right? If you right. have something to look forward to, that's going to get you up and moving. Yeah. And so I love that you're speaking to that meditation. Meditation is huge. I think getting at the quickest way to get out of your head is to focus on like the sensations of your body, focus on that right. breath and be with yourself. And I love that you're speaking to giving yourself that little bit of hope of like something good to look forward to, even if it is a movie or even doing like comedy, you know, thinking of co- do like a comedy thing, you know, put on like uh, Sebastian Maniscalco or Orny Adams, I think, <laughs> fun. you know, go on YouTube, find, find something to laugh about. Mm-hmm. Find something to laugh about that. Yes, that's it. Laughter. Like today, that's what came up for me in my devotional was that laughter is the best medicine. And so I was meditating on that today. And I love that we're having this conversation about joy, about delicious life, because laughter is truly the best medicine. And if you can find that through a comedy or something that you find funny, then you're able to bring yourself that little bit of joy. And again, the responsibility is yours to look for it. Or do pictures of, you know, things you're grateful for and people that you love. Do a collage of it. Yeah. Go and make a Pinterest, something like that. Oh, I'm a big fan of Pinterest. Yeah. (laughs) So tell me about your journey, your journey to like, where did you grow up and your streaker journey? Yeah. (laughs) I'm a Jersey girl through and through, you know, we don't pump gas, but we do it with class. And let's see. So I have, like I said, my two daughters and my third way working with people with therapy and I just think I've always been a spiritual person. Mm -hmm. Always, you know, I was been into like studying psychology and witchcraft and hypnosis and spirituality and things like that. And always been fascinated with things like that. So this is just kind of a natural fit for me. And I, and I love the fact that we can just reach people now through technology all over the world. It's amazing. It is really that's a miracle. Yes. It's amazing. And so do you live in Jersey now? Yes. I have never been actually to oh, you'll have to come visit. <laughs> yeah, I've never been to New York at all. And that is on my bucket list one day for sure. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. You'll definitely have to come visit. Yes. Yeah. And then I just, you know, I just love the idea of like even listening to Abraham Hicks, of just ease and joy and fun and deliciousness. You know, if like you have like the mother that can't get out of bed, think, think about butterflies, flower fields and puppies and blue glass. Like let's change the subject to something mm-hmm. delicious. Mm Because we don't have to talk about what's bothering you. Yeah, right. Talk about puppies and ice cream or or whatever, (laughs) a bubble bath, you know, going to a a, being on vacation and with palm trees. Like we can think Mm -hmm. about those things too. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that instantly lit my soul up. Take me to the palm trees. (laughs) Take me to the ocean with the waves crashing. (laughs) And then and then have a have a relationship with your inner child because your inner child's really playful and Mm -hmm. that that inner child really wants to play and that's you know creativity and and they just want to know they're safe. So you know you you know be their safety person. That is 100% true. My healing journey started truly with that inner child work for me, with going back and letting that inner Josie know that she is safe and that she is seen and that all that she did was perfect. She did the best she could. And so looking and going in that inner child, wanting to know that she or he is safe is so, is so true. Yeah. That's, that's really, it's a big thing. I want to do a book about being safe, feeling safe. It's a big, big, big deal. It's a big deal for the longest time in my life. I didn't feel safe in my body. I felt, I was so disconnected. I always say I was in another country and my body was here because yeah. I was just going through the motions. I was living on autopilot. It wasn't until I started doing that inner child work and starting to feel like it's okay to like actually be in my body that, so that one is huge. Like yeah, that safety, creativity, creativity, feeling, you know, play, that's where it all comes in, you know, just sit and. I did a uh, sketch yesterday with me holding my inner child's hand. Mm. And, uh, you know, it's like, don't judge yourself when you're drawing. It's mm-hmm. just, cause I wrote my inner child a letter and then I put, you know, how kids like pictures. So I just mm-hmm. drew a picture of us together because she oh, appreciated I, that. I love that. And I am one that judges my drawing. Like I will draw something and I'm like, eek. So, so the fact that you're saying, don't judge your creativity, don't judge your drawing that just spoke yeah. to me because it's so easy. 
to like look at something that you're doing and like instantly see it not as what you want it to be right that perfectionism <laughs> right exactly exactly so yeah you just gotta like let go of all, like what you know what if you just let go of complaining and judging and criticizing and you know <sighs> all these things no blaming you know and just everything yeah i just okay it's terrific it's all terrific mm -hmm. stop worrying about what you're accomplishing and what your kids are accomplishing and just how they're evolving and just being there for them. Mm -hmm. That one's a huge one too. That yeah. one's a huge one too. Cause even I am guilty of this. When I first had my son, I had this whole vision of how I'm going to teach him to meditate one day and how I'm going to teach him to like take this path in spirituality. And I had to be reminded that it is not, it is his path. Yeah. He is on his own journey and I am here just being the witness. Yeah, they come through us. And, and I had experience with that with my older daughter with special needs. And I wanted her to have a bat mitzvah. And she really enjoyed the process because she still goes back on my phone and, and, and looks at those photos. But the day came and luckily we had filmed all of her hard work and she wasn't interested in showing everybody what she could do. Mm. She was so excited. People were there. She was just going, hi, 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 hi. You know, and so we, we had the video to show people, but this was her experience. Mm. It wasn't what I wanted for her. Mm. It was, she got so much out of it. It was, this was like her way, not my way. Mm -hmm. And I learned that lesson from that. Yep. That one's a good lesson to learn, I believe. And I'm glad that I learned it early on because yeah. growing up, that was wasn't the case for me like there was a vision for my future there was a vision for where I was supposed to go and I know how that affected me and I, that's what I love about her you know the special needs part of her is that she's not thinking oh she has to please everybody she's mm. just being herself oh. and letting her own light shine so she was like I don't, I don't care if I'm supposed to be doing I'm excited all these people are here I'm gonna go and run down and say hi to everybody yeah. it's just a you know a natural thing to do Oh, it is. And we stop ourselves when we get in the way and we block ourselves so often. And it's like, what should I be doing? Who should I be pleasing? Who am I going to hurt? Whose feelings yeah. are going to get hurt by this? Right. Those are the thoughts. Right. And doing things for other people, not for yourself. Even having like having a self. I know it wasn't until recently that I even had a sense of self because mm the way I grew up and I was always, you know, trying to make my mom happy or my kid's dad happy or, you know, somebody aside mm -hmm. from me. I remember being called selfish early on, early, early on in my teenage years for saying no and putting myself first. And that word was so like, oh my gosh, ouch, that hurts selfish. I don't want to be that. And so that even propelled me to be like even more of a people pleaser. It was like, how can I make you feel good? How can I make you happy? And that's still something that I'm, to this day, I have to literally be so aware and so co conscious of it happening. And, and I know you got to make yourself happy because no yeah. one else is never going to be happy. And I know for moms, that one's a huge one because yeah. what we think is our kid, our kid, our kid, our kid, <laughs> and what maybe we'll get those scraps. <laughs> And we sacrifice so much that sacrifice is our kids appreciate it, but they never really get it. So, mm -hmm. you know, make sure you're sacrificing to a level that you can handle and not mm -hmm. over sacrificing. Cause I, I, my past, I've tended to over sacrifice and then mm -hmm. we become, become, we become resentful. Oh, that is so huge. The piece that comes to my mind when you just said that is asking for help Something yeah. that moms have a hard time doing. Right. Or not being super women. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. Sometimes we just do just take everything on and then we don't ask for help. And then people ex put more on us because that's the way we've trained them to, mm -hmm. to behave. Oh, he just said something so profound that we train them to behave. So yeah. we train people to give us all that extra. Yes. Right. We train people to take advantage of us because we don't stand in our power. That's a big thing for women. Yes. Yeah. That one's this is all the things to make your life delicious. All the things to make your life delicious is this is where the self-esteem piece comes in and taking up space and knowing you're important because then you can stand in that place of feeling good about strength and then you can play because mm -hmm. otherwise you're just the servant to everybody and everything mm -hmm. because you don't have enough strength in yourself to do it. It's, it's very interesting how self-esteem and playing and, and all that is connected having a happy life, all that. It's not easy when having a happy life, you have to work at it. And mm -hmm. it changes not 
big change. It's chipping away like at an ice sculpture. So don't mm-hmm. think because your people aren't making big changes that they're not getting stronger. Mm-hmm. It's small little changes. Yes. Oh, I love that you just said that it's small little changes because for me, I thought there was a finish line. I'm like, I've put in all this work. I've done all this healing. I've been on this journey for so long. When is it going to get easier? (laughs) And it's like each new level, each new thing that you try to put out into the world, each new chapter, becoming a mom, get married, like each new chapter requires you to kind of up level, requires you to do more work. So each time you're healing, it's like you're giving yourself, like you're taking off layers. Right. And you're never going to, as Abraham Hicks says, you're never going to get it done and you can't get it wrong. Mm -hmm. So just enjoy it. 100%. You're never going to get it done (laughs) and you can't get it wrong. That is so true. But we think we can get it wrong. We think there's a right way. There's a right way. Quotation marks. (laughs) Yeah. There is no right way. There's no right way, despite what other people tell you. They, and some people honestly think that they know the right way to do it. And there is no right way because there is no truth. And the way people I look at the world is completely different than you look at the world. Mm-hmm. I mean, I just found out that pigeons and bees see colors that we don't even know exist. Yeah. So where's truth? You know, because they're seeing things that we don't even know exist. Wow. That is mind blowing. Yeah. Isn't it? It's so, yeah. You know, when you people watch little creep, you know, creature like watching the bees work, you know, it's just kind of like you see the natural intelligence there. That's why the universe invites you to come outside and spend time in nature. Mm-hmm. And people don't, they're not present. They just walk, they're on the phone, whatever. So, you know, watch nature, watch birds do their thing, watch bees do their thing, watch animals do their thing. Oh, yeah. (laughs) I have a little Pomeranian. He is going to be 15 this year. And I still get so much joy (laughs) watching the way he and Everett, (laughs) the way they act towards each other. And that is the the quickest way I find to bring me back to the present moment. Cause I could be scrolling and I could be doing whatever I'm doing, but the moment, like you're saying, I notice that it stops me. Right. Right. (laughs) And you probably can hear my little guy. Yeah. He's cute. Yeah. So it's not, yeah. I mean, these, these big defining moments, you know, when we get married and our kids are born, those are, those are some of our best days, but a lot of these regular moments just can be so delicious. Mm -hmm. And it's some of the chores too. Like you're doing your dishes, put the music on, have a mm-hmm. dance party in your kitchen. You know, it, everything doesn't have to be boring and mundane. Yeah, that's a big one for us. The music is always playing. We have lots of music. Everett has a few favorite songs that come on and he just starts. <laughs> starts bouncing, right? And there's nothing yeah. more delicious than that. Oh, it's so true. There's nothing more yeah. delicious it's than about that. being present. And, and so, you know, the cell phone has changed us. And my, I guess my number one thing would be have a delicious life put the phone down, you know, going outside for a walk without your phone is magical it really is leave it in the house and just go around the block. All the times I've ever forgot my phone at home. I didn't even miss it. Like the first initial, like, Ooh, I left my phone at home is like, Ooh, but once that wears off, it's like, wow, you don't even miss it. And no. you don't miss anything. <laughs> No, you're very present. I mean, I remember life before the cell phone, obviously, and it was just slower. There wasn't so much demand on people. Mm-hmm. You know, like the phone was, you called somebody, it was either they didn't, an- they answered, they didn't answer, mm-hmm. or it was busy. Yep. That was thing. it. We called yep, back. Same thing with going over to somebody's house. They either were home or they weren't home. <laughs> right. You didn't know, you didn't know where everybody was 24 yeah. seven. And, and there's technology, there's things about technology that I love. Don't get mm-hmm. me wrong. Oh, for sure. But I just, you know, it run, it runs us. And I've noticed my brain works differently now. I don't, can't sit as long, things like that. So really important to put the phone down and connect mm-hmm. with what is going on around you. That one's big. Yeah. I like to have, you know, phone away Saturday, then to not just put the phone away on Saturdays. Mm-hmm. Oh, that one's big phone away Saturdays. Yeah. I don't do any social on Sundays, but phone away. That might be my new, a new practice. You can do phone away Sunday. (laughs) Yeah. I'm going to pick that one up phone away. Yeah. Why not? (laughs) Get your husband to put his phone away too. Right. It's not doing phones today. Oh my gosh. I just love that. Like something so powerful, like within our reach, but do we think about it? No, like we have to be reminded of this. So thank you for reminding us today of what it takes to live a delicious life, to be conscious, to be awake, to be aware. Yeah, to be be mindful. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, intentional, intentional of you know what your thoughts are, you know, what movies are going through your high, what story, what are you telling yourself? Like, what is this narrative that you've been? And this is the same thing that you told yourself yesterday, I bet. And the oh. day before that, and the day before that. How's that working out? And and I'm guilty of it too. I'm not saying I'm not, but I try, I try to be very aware of it. Yep. And the more you practice what's going on in your mind, the more you can become aware of it, the more it becomes easier to catch it when you feel, when you don't feel that deliciousness, when you don't feel that good, you start to be more aware when you're practicing being in that. Right. So that's, that yeah. is, yeah. You know, and, and the happier you get, it's like ironic, the happier you get, the higher you get, the more you have intuition. Mm -hmm. Oh, so true. So true. The days that I am vibing high, I am dancing, listening to music, having that delicious life are the days that all these downloads, like I, I can be writing and it just flows out of me. And I'm yeah. just like, where did all this goodness come from? But then the days where I'm like, get out of bed, I'm going through the motions, I sit down to write, nothing comes. Yeah. And so that's very true. And people can feel that and smell it. You know, when you see someone high vibe, happy dancing, you're attracted to that person. You want to be around that person, you know? And so that's the way to meet, you know, meet people, attract people. You want to attract new people in your life. Be happy, be high vibe. That's the way we're naturally supposed to be. Oh, you feel it too. When you are that vibe, when you are feeling good, when you are feeling alignment, it just feels like life just feels a little bit more effortless. Yeah. Like you're pushed in the right or pulled in the right direction instead of forcing yourself, pushing yourself. To right. Forward. And then, and right. And that's is what spirit responds to. And then your intuition can come. Mm -hmm. Oh, so beautiful. So yeah. what do you do to play? Oh, good question. <laughs> I like music. I like definitely like the dancing, you know, I have these conversations and I really love these kinds of conversations. Mm -hmm. So, you know, on my podcast and other people's podcasts, but I'm a personal growth junkie. So I just love to listen to Wayne Dyer, or Abraham Hicks or Deepak Chopra mm -hmm. or Joe Dispenza. And, you know, any, anybody like that has these high vibe conversations. Mm -hmm. That's my thing that I love to do. Yeah, me too. Yeah. My husband's like, aren't you sick of that yet? Like, like you said, sit down, let's watch a comedy, sit down, let's watch a movie. I'm like, no, this is super interesting for me. So yeah. I am right there with you on having these conversations that lift you up, that gives you the feeling of being completely in alignment. And yeah, all those people that you spoke of, they are great because they are having that conversation and they're allowing themselves to be a vessel basically. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You know, I, and I do, I watch TV with my daughter. I, you know, I try to do something to spend time with her. Mm -hmm. And and honestly, you know what the other number one thing that I've been doing, that's been awesome listening mm -hmm. and not thinking about what I want to say, mm -hmm. just listening. And people know when you're listening or when you're just thinking about waiting for your turn to speak and what they're saying is just going past you. Oh, yes. My life has changed so much, but I just decided to really just start listening and I realize how much I, I wasn't, I wasn't listening. Mm -hmm. Now I'm really like, cause when you're listening, you're being present. Oh, that is 100% true. When you're listening, you're being present. Yeah. Everybody just, you know, wants to be seen. Like you said, everyone wants to be seen, adored, and they want to feel safe. Thank you so much for listening to the Make Life Fun podcast. I am so filled with joy to have you here this show resonates with you, I have a gift for you. If you're feeling stuck, this freebie may be just what you need. I believe that if you know your why, it helps you get unstuck quicker. So to connect with your heart and know your why and figure out what it is that is most important to you, get the freebie. It's in the show notes. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast to get notifications each week. To support the show, you're invited to leave a tip in the tip jar. Information for all this is in the show notes. Sending love and light to the spirit listening to this today. Be blessed. <laughs>